Welcome everybody to the community theater. We're going to have a session here. Experience the Swarm API in virtual reality. And the speaker is uh, Lee Capilli, works at Deport. He's a developer there. And it says here that he um, cares deeply about the building systems for actual people. So please welcome Lee Capilli. Thank you. It's uh, lovely to see all of your faces here. And uh, I'm Lee. I'm from Denver, Colorado. I have a dog, and uh, we like to longboard together in the summer. Oh, my slide's not coming through there. Anyway, yeah, I'm from Denver. <laughs> this is a community theater. Uh, we're nothing without our community members. Mentorship it comes in many forms, and I uh, yeah, just have to start out with thank you. I think it's tasteful to say thank you to all these people who helped me. You know, people like Bren Briggs. Jerome Petazzoni, uh, Amir Shadri, you know, Gareth Rushgrove, Scotty Colton, uh, brilliant communi community members here with us uh, all around writing blog posts, documentation, having casual conversations with us, moving us forward. So, yeah. It's all good? Cool. And what I want to talk about today is not really about web VR or anything, but actually putting the fun back in the hacking that we do. Uh, I think that you should always try to have a reason to learn. But you don't always need a reason to hack on something in order to learn something cool, right? And um, what I want to kind of talk to you today about these sharp tools is that we have many tools around us that uh, have had a lot of love put into them by our community members. And they're available to us in the standard interfaces that we're taught with beginner workshops and uh, when you're messing with CI CD, when you're trying to learn how to use container layers to represent your application in an iterable and fast way. And when we use the Docker engine, uh, we typically learn starting from the CLI. But there are lots of very qualified creators in this room, people who are amazing in building their own creations. And we have amazing software development kits and REST APIs available to us in the way that the Docker engine is architected. The CLI actually does all of its operations for the most part uh, through this open API. And uh, that's how we get our containers in our Docker engine. Um, just kind of demo this for you for a sec. That's a, wow, that's a very small. Let's do that for later. I had a container here. So this is an Alpine container that I installed JQ and curl in. And it's a very simple, uh, one second. So you see I mounted the Docker socket into root there. And you can curl it. And there's like some information about my swarm. You can see that there's certificates in here. Uh, you can see the polling policies for uh, the, the raft protocol. Similarly, if I hop over and I change the endpoint here, uh, by the way, this, this section right here, since we're using a Unix socket, it doesn't matter. Like I can say Unix URL or whatever I want. Uh, and then I can just say containers, give me the JSON. And, you know, that spits me back everything that's on this machine. So, you know, like already immediately uh, without setting up any servers and that kind of thing, you have an API available to you to potentially expose in different levels of automation. Uh, say, you know, you're trying to write something that orchestrates a couple of containers for your own little hack. You're not using Swarm or Kubernetes. Um, curly API. Play around. Pipe it to JQ. Put it in a shell script. Whatever you want. You know, the, we come from all different kinds of places. I used to work with ops people, you know, with like 30 years in the industry and, uh, not everything is always shiny, but we have practical ways to expose these interfaces. Um, for me and my friends, you know, uh, we're application developers, and so we're like, what other kinds of tools are out there? There's actually a, a really uh, great image that you can spin up as a swarm service. You can mount the Docker socket into it, uh, and now you have something that is. Uh, 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 an API endpoint that you can put on an overlay network inside of Swarm. It's called eHazlet Docker Proxy. A uh, brilliant work out of the shipyard project. And for this application architecture, uh, we're going to use traffic to dynamically route things based off of labels. Uh, so at the Docker route, we'll take requests from the web application and bring them into the master's API. Uh, and then we're going to serve up some static assets with Vue.js and A-Frame. Uh, Vue.js is a way to declaratively manage DOMs, uh, so web pages with all of their different nodes in, um, in a stateful way. And we're going to fetch uh, data from 
the Docker proxy at the slash Docker route uh, with our static web page. And then we're going to ask these DOM nodes to actually be rendered by a thing called A frame. This is some brilliant work uh, making web VR incredibly accessible. Uh, it's out of the Mozilla Labs uh, research departments. And uh, we're going to throw that into a Node.js container with Webpack and mount our code into it so that we can edit code live on the fly. There's some brilliant hot module reloading things you can do there. Um, uh, that's for later. You can go check if you want now. Uh, oh, uh, as far as uh, documentation goes, if you are ever wondering about like what endpoints to actually curl, you know, like I didn't just pull containers JSON uh, out of nowhere. Uh, the Docker uh, Swagger APIs are very nicely rendered in some of the best documentation that I've ever used, and you should absolutely get on there. It's I think uh, even better than the normal Docker engine docs. Uh, you should totally get into this. There's all kinds of great stuff in here with uh, examples of errors and things like that. And uh, absolutely go check it out. You know, you can build all kinds of things. Uh, maybe a volume manager or a network plugin, that kind of thing. But I'm gonna hop into play with Docker. And I have a three node swarm here right now. Uh, hopefully we can make this a little bigger for you guys. And uh, I pulled down a Git repository, which is available right here. It's Stealthy Box VR Swarm. And I spun up this application uh, with Docker Deploy. So if you look at my stacks, I have a load balancing stack right here. That's uh, from from the repository, there's a proxy stack and a VR swarm stack. In the VR swarm stack, I have two services defined. And, uh, one is for the Hazlet Docker proxy. You can see that my Docker socket is managed or is mounted in here. It's being exposed by traffic at 2375 uh, at Docker. And then my front end application right here uh, has all of my code mounted in it from my local directories. And it's going to be serving in the container at port 8080 on everything else. Uh, it's all on this LB proxy network. And when you deploy that stack, you get a couple services. So let's do a service list. This is going to be a problem. Uh, yeah. Not sure if it's actually gonna be this DPI is way super high. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and grep for the VR services. So we have two services there. Um, they're at 80 and 8081, and I have the master branch checked out. You can see right here, this is reloading because of hot reloading. Uh, from my Webpack server, I just changed the code. And now I'm in here <laughs> and I can walk around. And this is running on Play With Docker. The code for this is very simple. out to master. In A frame you just kind of define some entities. So right here this is an entity describing nodes. I'm running it a for loop in Vue.js and rendering it from data that I fetch from these methods right here just using the fetch API. Very simple JavaScript. It's all in this scene view file. Uh, the rest of it is hot module reloading boilerplate. And uh, you set up some intervals to pull the API every second at the slash docker route. Uh, going into the services endpoint. It sets some sections here in data, and then that data is rendered by Vue.js in the DOM. This is a pug template so that it's a little bit easier to read. But what's cool about this as well is, um, and so again, we just want to be creating tools that we're having fun with so that we can learn more. And if I hop over to say a different branch, Webpack will reload all of my changes. 
So let's pop over to the logging bench. And there you go. I'm right in here. Um, if I set to the mobile view and refresh the page so that the media query reruns, you can actually hit that VR button there as well and then you'll see this in stereoscopic view. And so it's kind of nice. But um, what I want to invite you guys to do actually right now is go over to bit.do slash dive swarm on your phones. Um, because this is something that we can actually all kind of share and experiment with together. Some really interesting things uh, that are available to us from these APIs. Sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. D bit do dive swarm. Thank you. Appreciate that. Is it working? <laughs> and, um, yeah, so let's hop out there, refresh the page. Uh, you can see here that uh, this is the Docker endpoint on, on the Play with Docker. And I can access the API. Yeah. It's kind of being served by the application. But uh, again, we don't always need a reason to hack on something. But when we do, when we get together and we get with our friends and we create new ideas, we play with new technology, you know, I'm not an authority in the VR space, right? But this is something that I hacked together with my buddy in 200 lines of code. And gosh, we had so much fun. And this is not a space I see people playing with, right? And you have to imagine, I mean, people learn in so many different ways. There's many components of the Mobi project. There's all different kinds of custom resources that you can define in the Kubernetes APIs. And if we brought a little bit more of that talent, again, you know, all of you guys are creators, you're incredibly qualified you know, into playing with more media spaces and exposing information in different ways so that people can consume operational tooling in a unique frame of mindset, right? You can, you can describe more accurately the value add of these container systems to people who, you know, maybe don't empathize with some of the problem solving abilities that you have discovered in your own experimental journeys. Um, just one more thing, you know, so as a closing thing, we decided, hey, you know, okay, this is a great proof of concept and everything. I mean, you can actually use some of the gaze based interaction right here uh, to write logs over there. You can see I'm still worrying about some of the quirks here. There's a lot of logs from C Advisor. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm going to switch to a, a branch and leave you with this. It's cloud rendering fun. Let's hop over. There we go. <laughs> Kind of was going for a, a whole kind of like Mario, you know. I, I don't know where you went, Nathaniel. How am I doing on time? We got five minutes. Does anybody have any questions about how we put this stuff together? I, there's, there's a lot of stuff to go through. Some of these branches are pretty messy as far as code goes. But I, I really want to encourage you, you know, you, you have the tools available uh, and you should get with your friends and create something fun. Uh, I work for a music company, you know, I, we wrote a synthesizer. I was thinking of hooking up the synthesizer keyboard keys to make services and, uh, you know, pop containers into a swarm. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, what ideas do you guys have? What questions do you have for me? Anybody? Cool. Well, the code's up. Oh, yeah. Oh. You should definitely try to do the same in Minecraft. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's uh, necessary to have something in Minecraft to control our Docker containers because where else? Yeah, there is um, Marcos and Zatortio um, demo Dockercraft, and there actually is a little bit of Swarm integration as well. Um, this is not something that you can visit in a web browser on your phone, right? But uh, yeah, I think it would be definitely very cool to, or maybe even do something like a VR Galaga, right? Where your services are flying at you and you need to keep killing them or something. You know, so, it's like, 
sometimes I feel like that when I'm operating infrastructure at Bport. So. Get out. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. Thanks. And um, yeah. Cheers. Well, again, uh, the code is all available here at Stealthy Box VR Swarm. Uh, this is me on Twitter and GitHub. And uh, get out to your community, find a mentor, and and go hack on some cool stuff. Thanks.